you see that buck? He's right in the center of my spot scope, but he's in the trees. You really can't see it. You can kind of make out his body in them trees. He's not much. Cool. No. It's, it's nice along there, dude, along that tree line. Yeah. So. Pretty sure that that is those quakies right here. I'm gotcha. quite sure. Gotcha. Because at some point, not right now, so I looked enough country, that, that, that probably does not get hunted much down in there. Think. And as you walk off that hill, you, you see a lot more. There's a lot more to glass. Least to see. Yeah. yeah. What's that? I like your little earmuff thing. Oh, I'm styling here so I can hear. Are you teasing me? Yes. Gosh dang it. I never know whether to be a badass. <laughs> yeah, that's my earmuff. <laughs> Got it from Cabela's. <laughs> There's the guys. That's probably the same guys that you've seen down in this quake patch. Walking through those quakes. Christy here. Never fails me. I've failed her a couple times, but she never fails me. So it's about hunting does to me this time of year. Yeah, and a lot of that's covering the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. getting, <clears throat> hunting a place and getting yourself in a position where you can. Mm -hmm. Whether that's like, we did a lot of just driving roads and hitting glassing points. and yep. The weather can really tip it in your favor. And I don't know why the weather intensifies the rut. I, I really don't know why, but it does. further back I can get I feel like to me the more deer I can see and that's that's really what it's all about is you got to sort through a bunch of smaller ones to find that one. Mm -hmm. I think these deer are using this above timberline stuff it's just too open too many people but you go down these hills 300 yards you get into deer sign fresh deer sign and you know we've been here three days before the season and this is the best track we've, we've found. You see on the end, Jordan, how it's kind of blunt? I mean, an old buck would be even more blunt than that. But, you know, you can see he's kind of rounding off at the toes. He's not like your classic pointy deer track. So that you know, just means an older buck. And he's, he's as wide back here as he is long. So, But he's not a giant. We'd be see his dew claws hit right there, but they didn't go real deep three, four, five year old buck. And he's in with does, which is what I would expect. You know, we're what, we're into the second week of November now. Um, but you know, not a giant. And you could track him. I mean, there's just little patches of snow down there and then he gets in the grass, but there's quite a few deer uh, along that little timber line, you know, where the, where I, where the quakies hit the, hit the spruce. We've been up above Timberline a little bit, and there's there's no deer out in the real open stuff. They've moved off these tops, but they're high, way high. Um, I'm sure there's deer low in the oak brush. Um, we've seen some down there too, but we wanted to hit this first. Um, we, we've got some friends that have helped us with this that have taken some real good bucks out of here up high a little earlier in the year. And so, you know, we're kind of like, we should check it and see. And just like that, I found a good track down there. I think they're here. Um, so that's about our tactic. Just check it, but you know, you you and I will hit some of that oak brush lower country too. We've seen deer down there, but but they're between here and camp. I guarantee you that. So, so there's some weather coming in. Um, might help. Might make it tough up here because usually when the weather comes in and you're this high, you just can't see. So if we can inventory enough does and know where they're at, and we do come up here and we get um, fogged out, at least we can, like what you and I did last year, get down to some of those trees and pussyfoot around and maybe get a crack at a buck. But I expect these better bucks to be pretty close to these toes now. I mean, they're, they're rutting heavy. They're making babies if they want to have them in June. That water bar has been doing its job. Yep. Um, On the ground. You know, I may have even found it, dude. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I try to pick up litter, dude. I'm like you just going through the forest and just mayhem and leaving garbage and stuff, so. No pee. Once pee bottle, now a no pee bottle. Converted back to a canteen. <laughs> so it was a canteen and then it went to a pee bottle and then went back to a canteen, but I did wash it. 
nothing. It's a Mountain Dew bottle, dude. Just throw it away. That's some funny shit. <laughs> like earlier in the fall, when the bucks are just still in their summer pattern. I don't know how you feel about this, Travis. I don't worry about the moon much. I don't either. You know, I mean, it is what it is. And, you know, I tried to show that in that Nevada film. I was hunting those bucks under a full moon. And, frick, they were still out every morning in force. Yep. But my experience has been when the rut comes, like what Travis says, I think those bucks work pretty hard at night. Chasing does, they cover a lot of country. And so the mornings are very slow. But I've actually seen the evenings be be pretty perky, you know, because they've laid down all day. You know, they'll get up three, four, five o'clock, and totally. That's agree. about as much as I know. Like that eighteen buck I killed a few years ago. That's exactly what it was. Three o'clock. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Three o'clock. And this buck's, I mean, he'd been bedded all day, and he's up running through them quakies, chasing does, and the does got up about that time. Mm -hmm. See how clean his ears are? He's only got one cut in his ears. His neck is, you know, it's swollen, but if you look at him, he's not that much bigger than the does. Or when you see a 250, 300 pound one, you see this one too? Yep. I can see those two get in a fight. The rut is on. Just can't shoot them. Just can't shoot them. That's okay. Leave some seed for next year. You know, maybe they rut less at night and more during the day because it's cold. I, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I know when, like, we got we got a big storm in, like Jordan said, opening day. And then it just got colder and snowier every day. We're five days into it now. And the rut just every day gets, gets more intense. Um, but I guarantee if it turned off 60 degrees tomorrow... Um, n number one, you lose your snow, so your visibility goes away. Mm -hmm. down. You, just, you just don't get to see as many bucks. And, and you'll still see ruddy bucks, but they're just not out all hours of the day. It's kind of, it's kind of yeah. So, man, when you get the snow and the cold together, that is not the time to sleep in or miss that mm -hmm. weekend or whatever. That's when you want to hunt. You can look at more bucks in two days when you got the weather like that than you can in, geez, two weeks of when it's just warm and dry. Gusts up to 20 miles per hour until midnight. Monday, snow showers likely. Is it level 10 yet, Rob? Hi. It went back to a one. <laughs> <laughs> about Dahmer Pass. <laughs> I've seen this with, with bucks in the rut. This is a signpost just like in whitetail hunting. And so if you look, we got old, old rubs here. Okay. And then you got a new rub right here. And this buck has just come in here and you can see where he stood there, just torn the crap out of that bush. And, you know, I'm, I don't know if it's the scent or whatever, but multiple bucks come here. In fact, you should sit here for a couple hours and call us if you see one. Yeah, there's a doe bedded down there. The other one's walking around. What do we got going, Robbie? Gonna have some.
cow elk tenderloin. It's been aged two weeks. My son got it on the 25th of October, so just trimming off the stuff that dried out. Should be fabulous. It's my favorite cut of meat. Some people call them the fillets. But we've also got a cast iron skillet. That's probably what I'm going to do. And we'll uh, throw some onions in there. Sear it in butter. It's going to be delicious. Some people don't like this cut of meat because it's kind of strong. Some people consider it guts because <laughs> you got to take it out from the inside. But I find if you just let it age a couple of weeks and you just do it in the fridge on a rack, that gets rid of a lot of that gamey flavor. And man, there's nothing more tender than that piece of meat, I promise you. I want to be more comfortable, and if I'm more comfortable, then I want to hunt harder. Yes. And that's so important. When it gets cold like this, and you're really trying to keep the pressure on the bucks, hunting every day, being out at the prime times, morning yep. and evening, you got to have a good camp. All right, what is it, the third day? We got epic conditions. Uh, snowed again last night, put down a couple of inches. Not too foggy, we'll see. We're splitting up. Um, I'm headed up the bottom. Travis is headed up the top. Uh, I personally, I'm looking for a buck of beard shaver quality because I got a deal going with Hobbs here that if I get a 200 inch net typical, that he has to shave that muskrat off his chin. So man, I'm gonna work extra hard today. For me, everybody throws around 200, but man, like when it hits 190 plus, like I'm in. Like yeah. that's, yeah. Uh, that is as good as it gets. Like, yeah. I mean, you're talking B and C quality. Trying to glass in that without the snow, it's so hard, so hard. And that little bit of snow, I mean, shit, there's no way I could have spotted those deer. No way. And man, a anybody can do it. You can kill a 200 inch buck on, the worst units you really can mm -hmm. i mean and it's been done and not that it's easy and not that anybody should plan on it but it is possible and that's what's so cool about mule deer for me this robbie's down over here me and jordan ran up on the side by side is awesome glassing point and just a few minutes ago we could see really well like we're talking even out to almost probably four or five miles and we could see way up top and out in the oak brush and one thing when we were scouting before the season, we looked at this and thought this is going to be an awesome place to come and glass, especially if we got snow and it was epic. We pulled up here and I think we had two bucks in five minutes. I bet that's probably three miles. He's in some thick brush and quakies, but I can definitely see antlers. I mean, he's... He's definitely a mature deer. Probably the best buck we've seen so far. But as you can see, you really can't see. So now we're gonna build some coffee and wait. Haven't heard from Robbie. Um, if it could clear off and we can get back to glass, I think we're gonna find a giant. I think we really will. It's perfect conditions, you can't beat it. It's just the fog, but that's what you get with snow in late season, so. When the snow happens, you know, that's the advantage that I, like you really get is like when everything's white and those deer just pop from such a distance. I mean, and it really doesn't even take anything special, just a pair of 10s. I mean, and you can be very effective at those long distances when everything's white. I don't know. I'm probably gonna say I'd shoot this buck. I really think he's probably, I, I know he's 170 plus like I he's he's a really good buck it's pro the best buck we've seen I've seen so far I wonder what his plan is if he's going around the whole hill it's probably lost. <laughs> Don't know where he's at. <laughs> Jordy and Travis went up to the top and um, me and Charlie are just gonna work some of these little roads and trails that are down in the bottom. 
according to our map, this is a migration route of, of sorts and we really have not hunted it. And uh, so that's the plan this morning, looking at some nice, nice hillsides here. A lot of times you just have to stop and glass through the trees, but if there's deer in here with this white background, we should see them. And this afternoon with life still confined to the Northern Park Range. And now the extended outlook for the period west state through Monday, additional snowfall is possible for Northern and Central portions of the forecast area. Okay, what is it, the fourth day? So today, um, it's it snowed again last night and there's no visibility right now. So we're debating on whether to go up top or just ride these roads and see if we can see where deer have crossed during the night. Because they are moving and we checked the migration routes yesterday and everywhere there's supposed to be deer, there's deer. So I think it's just a matter of, of it's so thick, figuring out where to glass from and look at enough deer that you can turn over a good buck. Sometimes people doubt me, but it's all true. It sounds corny, but it's true. Oh, I guess I should put my tripod head on there. That's not going to work. Are oh, you great? <laughs> Catching me in action here. And then the other thing I was going to mention too is the burns. I mean, where I was hunting tonight, I really would bet that if it wouldn't have burned in there that I probably wouldn't have seen any deer in there. There would have, mm -hmm. yeah, no, and they I wouldn't have been in there. A couple decades ago, that mountain, there oh, there was just a few places on it to find Yeah, deer. just so thick. around those meadows. Yep. Everything else was just old growth timber. Yep. And like Jordan was talking about, that edge is what's interesting is, you know, these burns, they kind of come in and they, you know, and they're kind of mosaic burns. So you got some standing live, you got some, you know, where it didn't get really hot and all those deer it seems to me like they're kind of in those edges mm -hmm. and it does make a big difference we saw a good buck over on that mountain first thing i'm trying to figure out is how far away is it and if we can hunt him i'm virtually 100 percent sure he's on public so there's no problem there but can can we get to him and where is he exactly because i know how it is when i get over there i'm gonna get lost i'm gonna forget which which hillside i saw him on so i'm just trying to mark this up and come up with a plan of attack how to get in there i think there's a trail that goes right below it well we got to chain up because that buck is down that canyon and we got to get the horse trailer back down in there i don't want to ride that horse clear from here to where he's at we got another couple miles up that drainage, so we'll chain up, get the horse trader down there, and then we'll saddle him up in there, and then you and I will just leapfrog him up in there, trade off riders, and it'll be a lot better, especially if we get the buck, because we can get him out of there tonight, and I have to go back, because he'll freeze solid tonight if you leave him in there. I had a biologist tell me one time, a long time ago, and I remembered this, that deer are creatures of the edge and and what he means by that is where all these different plant types come together that's typically where you're going to find deer and not not just the different plant types but different plant ages so it can't be just all old growth of whatever i mean we see old growth aspen up here and the deer are in it but i think it's because you can see in it mm -hmm. you know there's not not there's I not agree. low brush but i don't think they spend a lot of time in it where jordan and i went up the mountain tonight and we're hoping to get a crack at that buck um it's it's so thick but it's just perfect we made it up here we're just gonna go slow we don't even know if he's still here but at least we're on the right mountain now i think he's right up there in that oak brush we were watching does down in there and 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 what that does is with with all that edge and then the um Different in ages, I think, is called succession. So you have old aspen down to young aspen, and then it goes down to your, your brush types. That's a lot of feed for deer, is what it is. So yeah, if you're, you know, you'll find certain deer out in wide open sagebrush mm -hmm. or, you know, old growth quakey or even even timber, but I don't think they spend a lot of time there. It's the last day. Travis killed a pretty good buck over here yesterday, so. I'm going to hunt this burn here for a few hours. I'm already on buck tracks. Right there. This is a buck track from yesterday. And during the rut, it seems like you find a lot of pee in their tracks. It's like dribbling down their legs. I don't know if they're marking territory. I have no idea. But 
during the rut is about the only time that I see it. So when you're still hunting, these are the places you slow way down. See all the sign? See the little bench down there? Wraps around me. This is the kind of place I'll take half hour or so to go through. This is a buck bed. The reason I know is because there's his back tracks and you can see that he peed almost straight down. Where a doe, it'll be more spread out than that. A lot more splash. Just got a shot at a good buck. I come up over this little ridge right here, I'll show you. And I was moving slow enough, I caught his does up feeding. One of them got my wind, and because the wind was blowing right at him. She got all dicey and didn't know what to do and was walking around getting everybody up and he stood up and he's not a giant, but it is the last day, so. Don't know if I hit him though. I had to shoot through some thick brush. He was right there in the center of the screen. So I shot through that little lane and he gave me head on quartering, so it looked good, but it was pretty hard to get steady. Well, no harm done. I did not hit him. I was able to track all the deer out of that little area. They'd been feeding heavy in there, so it was hard to find their tracks. But once I got out of there and could see where they were bounding, I got on all of them, four or five different deer and no blood. I made about a 150 yard circle around the area, so just missed him. Um, he was facing at me. I, I, I had this shot right here. He was down below me, 135 yards. and. I had to shoot off my knee and then kind of duck down a little bit to try to get under the branches. And I don't know if I hit one of those branches. I was literally shooting through about a 12 inch gap. So who knows, just how it is hunting in the trees. You don't always get them. A lot of fun though, still hunted right into them. <laughs>